The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. Today's lesson includes six characters, all of which contain a similar looking three small strokes. The first character was originally composed of three vertical marks representing something small or trifling, such as grains of sand or bits and pieces of anything. It was later standardized into a central line with two small strokes, one on either side, pronounced third tone, xiao, xiao. It means small, trifling, or in a negative sense, petty. We'll begin with physical size. Baozitaishiaola. The steam buns are too small. Here also we find the tai le sentence pattern from lesson 14. A young couple is often described as xiao liang ko, two people in love and sufficient unto themselves. Xiao tian di refers to a pleasant space where one feels most at home, most comfortable, whether it's at home, school, or work. In Chinese, two words of opposite meaning appearing side by side often define a specific concept. For example, long and short means length, high and low means height, and da xiao, large and small, is the expression for size. So, tu di de da xiao would refer to the size of a piece of land. Now, let's look at more abstract uses of this character. Xiao shi means an hour. So, liang xiao shi would naturally be two hours. To ask someone politely to sit down and wait for a few moments is xiao zuo yi xia. Xiao zuo yi xia. And to underestimate or look down on a person is literally to see them as small. If someone tells you, 不要小看人, or 不要小看他, they believe you're misjudging or underestimating this person's abilities or potential. If you've determined that someone is truly deserving of being looked down upon, however, you can always call him or her a despicable person, 小人, behind their back, of course. The second character in today's lesson originally depicted a kneeling woman with two pins in her hair, representing sharp or pointed objects. This form was later corrupted to show two men with hairpins, which gave rise to the modern pictogram. Unfortunately, the modern result apparently was too much trouble to write, so an entirely new character was invented. This new character, pronounced first tone, jian, jian, was a simple description, a tiny tip which becomes bigger as it becomes longer. Not a bad description of a sharp object, actually. The adjective phrase referring to sharp or pointed objects is jian jian de, jian jian de. Sharp objects can pierce other things, including our ears, so a piercing scream is jian jiao. And to tell someone to stop screaming like that would be bu yao jian jiao. The third character in this lesson is a combination of small and flesh, pronounced fourth tone, xiao, xiao. This is another phonosemantic compound with the purple strokes of xiao serving as the phonetic while also contributing to the meaning of the character. This compound character itself will also reappear later as a phonetic in quite a few characters. In English we have the expression in the flesh, meaning a person is physically present, and the Chinese meaning of xiao is similar. A smaller version in the flesh, or a small embodiment of someone or something. 
The definition, in other words, is to be alike or similar. To criticize a son as unworthy of his parents, not embodying their interests or inclination, is bu xiao. More common is the use of xiao to list the twelve animals of the Chinese zodiac, called shi er sheng xiao. Each animal represents one year in the twelve lunar year cycle of the Chinese system for calculating dates. In other words, each animal is the embodiment of a sign of the zodiac. The animals in order are the rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. This year happens to be the year of the ox, which began on February 12, 2021. As with astrology in the West, not too much credence is given by Chinese people to the supposed personality traits, career, and marriage prospects attributed to each animal sign. However, there is always a noticeable rise in the number of births, both natural and caesarean, during the year of the dragon, since the dragon is considered to be an especially auspicious animal. The fourth character in this lesson is probably one you already know. The second person pronoun pronounced third tone, ni, ni. This character originally depicted a silkworm, just beginning to weave its cocoon. Since this meaning was not especially useful, the character was instead borrowed very early on for use as a pronoun, meaning you. On the right is the traditional character, which, unsimplified and minus the person radical, is still used in some expressions. It's a character in its own right, and no longer refers to the second person at all, or to silkworms in their cocoons either, for that matter. Keep in mind that this character, ni, will take the person radical for men and boys, or the female radical for women and girls. But as with ta, the pronunciation doesn't change. During or after the time of the May 4th movement of 1919, Chinese scholars repurposed rare or obsolete characters to designate female gender, but seem to have gotten carried away, since few Western languages even bother to make a distinction between male and female second-person pronouns. Our first example is plural you, niemen, referring to women and girls. The most common greeting in Chinese is ni hao, generally rendered in English as hi or hello. Another example is you in object position, demonstrating that pronouns make no distinction between subject and object. Ta zai jiao ni. She's calling for you. Our fifth character today is strikingly similar to our first one. It's composed of four vertical marks instead of three, and in ancient times was interchangeable with today's first character, xiao. In modern Chinese, however, they've been differentiated, this new version being pronounced either third tone xiao, xiao, or fourth tone, shao, shao. Making it a split sound character and a phonosemantic compound. Third tone shao means small in quantity, few in number, short in duration. Our first phrase is a question, and another example of opposites side by side expressing a concept. Here, many, few, juxtaposed to convey the idea of quantity. Duo shao, duo shao, how much, or how many? To say quite a few, the negative would be used. Bu shao ren, literally, not a few people. 
As a verb, shall can mean to become fewer in number or to go missing. 东西没有少 Nothing's missing. Literally, the things did not become fewer. An affirmative example would be, 少一本书 One book's missing. Or this example, 看看少不少人 Check to see if everyone's here. If anyone's missing, as an imperative, one could criticize a friend for procrastinating by saying, "Ni shao tuo la," quit putting it off. This is similar to English expressions with "cut," as in "cut the jokes," "cut it out." Shao can also function as a sort of adverb. For example, "Ni shao kai kou hao bu hao." You keep quiet, okay? Or, hold your tongue, will you? Another example would be, "Ta shi shao you de ren cai." He's a rare talent. Shao you de means rare or scarce, literally, to have or be few in number. Fourth tone, shao, appears less frequently in conversation. Unless you're talking about youth or young people in general, an example would be, 少女 a young girl. Our sixth and final character is a pictogram of a thatched hut, pronounced second tone, 鱼鱼 I've chosen to include this character here because it incorporates the vertical stroke with two dots, but it's not in any way related to the meaning of small. Aside from being a Chinese surname, as in Yu Tai Tai, Mrs. Yu, this character is limited in use. The original meaning of hut has long been obsolete, but this component will reappear in future lessons as the phonetic element for other. More important characters. Here is our color chart with today's six characters: 小尖小鱼你 and 少 So, what have we learned in today's lesson? One. In the original oracle bone writing, three or four vertical marks represented the idea of tiny bits and pieces, or things small in number. Xiao and shao were used interchangeably in ancient texts. Two, xiao can refer to physical size, da xiao, or abstractions such as a short period of time, xiao zuo yi xia, or two hours. 两小时 or even belittling someone by underestimating them, 小看人 Three, hairpins were used to represent the idea of sharpness, 尖尖的 and piercing sounds such as screaming, 尖叫 Four, when small is added to flesh, the resultant 小 is a character. Indicating a smaller likeness of something larger. The expression "bu xiao" is used to describe a son as unworthy or even degenerate because he doesn't embody the interests or virtues of his parents. Xiao will resurface in a future lesson as a phonetic element in several more important characters. Five, the Chinese zodiac. Consists of twelve animals embodying specific characteristics, each animal representing one year of a repeating twelve-year cycle. These animals are called Shi'er Shengxiao. Six. Chinese may say they are not at all superstitious, but many parents make a special effort to conceive and bear a child during 
a year of the dragon. The dragon is a particularly auspicious animal in Chinese lore. 7. The character for second person, you, ni, was originally a silkworm spinning its cocoon. Since the silkworm in a cocoon was hardly a productive usage, the character was borrowed to express second person and other ideas. Remember that you in Mandarin has both male and female versions in writing. 8. Third tone, shao, can be an adjective, as in bu shao ren, quite a few people, or a verb, as in shu shao le yi ban, one book's missing, or even an imperative similar to cut it out in English. For example, shao tuo le, stop procrastinating. 9. When pronounced fourth tone, shao is restricted to describing youth, as in shao nu, or a person of lesser rank within a group. 10. The pictogram of a thatched hut is the origin of the character pronounced yu. In modern Chinese, this character is used almost exclusively as a surname, yu fu ren, madam yu. However, it will show up in future lessons as a phonetic element. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.